another episode of We Seek Wisdom Podcast, and we're looking at Dr. Garlock's autobiography, I Being in the Way, The Lord Led Me, and there's a link to that in the description. And while I'm thinking of it, if you're finding benefit from these podcasts, please click that subscribe button below and click the like, uh, that little thumbs up icon you'll see down there, and even that notification bell so you're notified next time we put out a podcast. And share these with your friends and, and folks at your church and, and various ministries and folks you come in contact with. So hopefully it can be a help to them as well. But today we're looking at another aspect of Dr. Garlock's rather long life. You're, what, you're about to turn 91 <laughs> in another month or two? 91. In a couple of months I'll be 92. 92. And wow. The, the Lord has done so many things over the years. And yes. there have been so many ancillary things, I guess is the right word, sure. that are related to my, my life. And uh, uh, the uh, over the years of writing and producing various music projects, Florgy and I wrote many songs that re remained a part of a cantata or a musical or a larger work mm -hmm. that have never seen the light of day, we mm -hmm. would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> as a hymn or song by itself. Uh, three of these songs will be in the, in the, in the uh, book that we're going to be talking about. Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, mm -hmm. The Greatest Love, mm -hmm. and The Lord is So Good. They appeared in a musical that Florentine and I wrote called The Richest Family in Town. Mm -hmm. And I will mention different aspects of that project with each song because that's it's so fascinating how we wrote that thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was a statement from me on the first page of that printed book of that unusual musical. Mm -hmm. It will fill you in on the purpose of the musical. My mother's mother, my grandmother, lived about a half mile away from where we lived as, as children, and she regularly helped to meet the needs of our family of nine children. There were seven boys and two girls in our, my wow. family. One of the things she did for us was when my oldest brother, Ed, needed a new trombone. My grandmother, Grandma Campbell, made vanilla chocolate, and peanut butter fudge mm. that we kids sold to buy Ed that trombone. Mm, good. Grandma also wanted us children to be interested in, in the needs of the lost, just as she was. And the richest family in town, the musical we're talking about, was loosely based upon a combination of those two things. Mm -hmm. The characters were all real people. The events actually happened. And the places like the church and diner are still in the town of Coles, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to me. Uh, I was up there just several years ago when my oldest brother passed away. Mm -hmm. By the way, he was uh, at Iwo Jima in the Marines. Oh, wow. Never recovered from it. Mm -hmm. But he passed away at uh, 93 years age mm -hmm. just several years ago. And I was there. And the diner that we did is mentioned in that musical and the, and the Baptist Church is still a fundamental Baptist church oh, good. in Cole, New Jersey. That's great. So, in, But in this musical we're talking about, we also included songs that were based on the godly character of my grandmother, Camel. Mm -hmm. She lived out the philosophy on which she based the many poems that she wrote. To Love is to Give is one of the songs in there, and that reveals the fact that she was constantly giving things away and doing things for other people, and especially for her family. Mm -hmm. uh, every time she would come to see Florentine and me, she'd always bring something or buy something for us. Oh, okay. She had her family over to our house when I was a child once a week to make sure we had at least one good dinner <laughs> because you know, we were uh -huh. eating uh, dry cereal before we even had Frosted Flakes, no cereal, evaporated milk. The evaporated milk mixed with water yeah. on our cereal. Um, so she, that's why she always had us over for one good dinner. She made sure of that. And then Do Your Giving While You're Living is another song in there. And that reflected that she bought me a 1947 Chevrolet in 1950 for my extension work at Bob Jones University. Oh, great. With some of the money. That, she bought that with some of the money my grandfather left for her to live on after he passed away in 1945. That is just only one example. But here's an example that we would like to, 
I'm going to ask Tim to read to you. Mm-hmm. Of, it's in, in my autobiography in more detail, but let, let's read what, 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 what came along with that. Sure. Dear Dr. Garlock and Brother Hamilton, I've always been fearful to try a musical drama for our Christmas program. I did not think we had the horses to pull, bring it off properly. Well, we just had a wonderful experience this Christmas. I ordered your The Richest Family in Town. My daughter loves to direct dramas, and she was quite sure we could do it. I asked one of our ladies to direct the choir and to find someone who could play such fancy stuff. (laughs) Brethren, we had the greatest time. Our people were just wonderful, so cooperative. We had never had a choir before in my many years here as pastor. My son-in-law gathered all the stuff we would need, so many pitched in and lent a hand. Half of our church was going to be in the production. (laughs) We prayed, we invited, we practiced. I felt its message was so poignant, so pointed, and so practical. We wept and laughed the night of the presentation as well as the practices. God had done a good work. We averaged 115 on Sunday nights. Those in the program numbered 65, so we only have chairs and pews for maybe 200. That night brought in 252 folks. We had over 100 visitors that night. We are located out in the country, and our parking lot ran over into the road in several (laughs) directions. We did have fudge that night. Everybody got two pieces in a baggie. Well, 200 got two pieces. Our faith was not great enough to make 252. We handed out oranges and peppermint candy. There were so many blessed things that we received. I cannot relate them all. We had never had a grand piano anywhere within five miles of this place. (laughs) One of our men arranged to have a six foot three inch grand piano brought in. That same family is giving that piano in honor of a son whom the Lord took to glory two years ago. It's a brand new instrument. Gentlemen, I sure do appreciate the quality of music you have prepared and provided. We were so blessed by it. It was a high night and folks stood around and talked for over an hour beyond our program's conclusion. I should tell you that we received a word of a missionary family in Tongo, the Matchett family. Brother Matchett was killed by nationals back in October or November. The emails I received indicated that they buried Tim Matchett next to, of all people, Dallas Washer, the missionary you included in your musical. It was rather it was rather incredible that the name came up at the same time we used the richest family in town. I wonder what God is going to do with that which we lay at his feet. May God bless you and your families. We are indebted to you. Isn't that so fascinating? Yes. We just wrote that based on my childhood mm-hmm. as a little kid. And then we, we didn't make it the family of nine. I cut it down to three, mm-hmm. three, three children. Mm-hmm. And my mother in the diner is still there. In fact, uh, um, when we were at uh, William Bradbury, who wrote the... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Save you like a shepherd lady. It's the mm-hmm. original one that we we wrote a new tune for for mm-hmm. the richest family in town, mm-hmm. and uh, we went to his uh, looking for his cemetery, uh, his grave in a cemetery in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. There was a woman standing there mm-hmm. uh, as we pulled into the cemetery, and she knew where the grave was, and it's a big obelisk, and has uh, his name on it. And all the things that he had done and how he had written the music for Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. That Florjean and I sang at our wedding. Oh, wow. And uh, that, so that was very interesting. And then I heard from her later on mm-hmm. because she knew where that was. By the way, we stood there. She had a friend of hers with her. And we stood around that grave site and sang Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, all of us crying, thinking about what God has done. Mm-hmm. And then I heard from her later, and she said, uh, when she wrote to me after she got a copy of The Richest Family in Town, she said, I just had lunch at the Caldwell Diner today. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I think this is going to be heaven for us, God's going to put things together that we had no idea that he was working on our behalf 
all of the time. And we just all we had to do was trust him. Yes. And if you would like to use this powerful Christmas cantata musical in your ministry, check the description below. There's a link to where you can uh, obtain it from Majesty Music and hopefully have a similar story to tell of how the Lord uses it there in your ministry. 